Welcome to today's webinar, the CDM, CFPP, and CEC, the recipe for success. My name is Jackie Pressinger, and I'm Director of Strategic Partnerships at the American Culinary Federation. ACF has joined with the Association of Nutrition and Food Service Professionals to provide this webinar. I'd now like to introduce Brad Riz, the Director of Marketing Communications at AMFP. Thank you, Jackie. We at ANFP are very excited to team up with ACF and share the benefits of being credentialed or certified through both ANFP and ACF. Combining the culinary skill set gained, gained with the Certified Executive Chef certification with the management, nutrition, sanitation, and safety expertise of the Certified Dietary Manager Certified Food Protection Professional credential will position any individual to be the perfect candidate to lead a team in whichever industry they choose to pursue. We are excited to be joined today by Chef Leah Schuler, PCEC, CDM, CFPP, and Chef David Voles, CEC, CDM, CFPP. Chef Leah and Chef David are credentialed or certified through each of our organizations and are going to share their stories and why they feel having the CEC and CDM, CFPP is both a benefit and an advantage. Before we speak with Chef Leah and Chef David, we're going to learn a bit about the CDM CFPP credential and the CEC certification. At the end of the webinar, there will be time for questions. If you have a question throughout the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box on the bottom of your Zoom screen. The slides from today will be emailed to all registrants after the webinar. Let's get started. Catherine Church is the Executive Director of the Certifying Board for Dietary Managers, the credentialing agency for ANFP. Catherine is going to take a few minutes to share more about the CDM CFPP credential. Thank you for joining us, Catherine. Thanks, Brad. So I'm gonna talk about what the CDM CFPP credential is. It stands for Certified Dietary Manager, Certified Food Protection Professional. You want to put that slide up? Individuals who hold the credential are nationally recognized experts at managing food service operations. They are identified as qualified professionals. Many work in healthcare, long term care facilities, rehab centers, senior living communities, and hospitals. Some work in correctional facilities, schools, and the military. Others work for corporations. All are trained and qualified to ensure food safety, manage menus, food purchasing, and food preparation. And to apply nutrition principles, document nutrition information, manage work teams, and much more. They are all leaders in the food service industry and in their own organizations. Next slide, please. Brad, this is Matt, the producer. We are not seeing your slides. Are you sharing your screen? There we go. Sorry about that. Thank you. Our data indicates that roughly 68% work in healthcare about 11% work in other long-term care arenas and 17% are employed in other areas, the military, correctional, school food service, et cetera. The vast majority of CDM CFPPs are full-time exempt employees. As you can see, the most popular titles are at the manager and director level. So why become certified? The number one reason CDMs want the credential is for career advancement and professional opportunities. The CDM CFPP certification offers a career path for individuals who want to continue to learn and grow throughout their professional lives. The CDM CFPP credential has a defined scope of practice. This means that these individuals have the training and expertise to competently perform the responsibilities of a certified dietary management manager which are clearly defined and validated. The credential is nationally recognized and those who earn it are in demand by employers because of their ability to lead a department and deliver consistent results in food service operations. 
CDMC FPPs have higher wages and increased opportunities for career advancement. The credential is included in CMS regulations. So what does that mean? CDMs are recognized in legislation by 18 states to serve as the Director of Food and Nutrition Services. In 2016, CMS, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, released their revised regulations. And the third and final phase of the revisions went into effect in 2019. These regs list the CDM CFPP as the primary qualification for the Director of Food and Nutrition Services in the absence of a full-time dietitian in CMS-funded long-term care facilities. Also clarified in the regs is the requirement for a member of the Food and Nutrition Services Department participating on the interdisciplinary team, or IDT. Only a CDM or a registered dietitian are qualified to fill this role as defined by scope of practice. So qualifications. The only way to become a CDM CFPP is to pass the CDM credentialing exam. The first step is to become eligible to sit for the exam. And to do that, you must qualify through one of five pathways of eligibility. Next, you need to pass the exam, and then you need to fulfill the requirements needed to maintain certified status. I'll highlight two pathways that I think will apply to most of you participating today. However, information on all of the pathways is available on our website. Pathway two is for graduates of a two-year, four-year, or greater college degree in a related field. A transcript from the school is required to show proof of graduation as well as course content. And a minimum of one course in nutrition and two in food service management are required in that course of study. Pathway 3A is for graduates of a comprehensive minimum 90 hour food service program curriculum who also have two years of non-commercial food service management work experience. A transcript from the schools required to show proof of graduation as well as course content and a minimum of one course in nutrition and two in food service management are required. An employer verification form has to be submitted with the application to confirm appropriate work experience. Let's talk about the exam itself now. The exam has been offered since 1985. Originally, it was the core certified dietary manager exam. And in 1996, the exam was upgraded to integrate the certified food protection professional designation, which emphasizes the significant level of sanitation and safety included in the credential. The exam is administered by a professional testing agency and is part of a nationally recognized competency assurance program for dietary managers. There's third party oversight through the National Commission for Certifying Agencies or NCCA which is an organization that accredits certification programs that meet rigorous standards for certification. The Certifying Board for Dietary Managers is the organization that oversees the CDM CFPP certification program and has been accredited by the NCCA since 1989. The exam is offered in computer-based testing format, consists of 160 questions, and you are allowed three hours to complete it. The exam covers five content areas, as you can see on the slide. And as soon as you hit the submit button to finish your exam, you'll see your results on screen. You also get a printed copy of your results to take with you when you leave the test center. Please visit our website or contact our professional services department where we have a great team that's available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Catherine. We are now going to learn about the CEC certification as well as other offerings from ACF. Michelle Whitfield is the Director of Culinary Programs at ACF. Thank you for joining us, Michelle. Let me unmute and start over. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. I'm happy to be here to talk about ACF and ACF certifications. I'm going to start with an overview and then I'll dive into the CEC. 
If you go to the next slide, please. The American Culinary Federation was founded in 1929 and is the largest professional chefs organization in North America. We have more than 15,000 members belonging to over 150 chapters across the US as well as internationally. ACF is the industry leader in offering educational resources, training, apprenticeship, programmatic accreditation and certifications designed to enhance professional growth for all current and future chefs and pastry chefs. Next slide. ACF certification is the only culinary program with stackable credentials and is recognized throughout the industry and by the Department of Labor as a standard of excellence in culinary skills and knowledge. ACF certifications validate knowledge, skills, and experience in industry relevant competencies and are earned based on education, experience, and successful completion of both a written and practical exam. I won't go into detail for each level, but as you can see, we have a total of 15 certifications ranging from entry level with no work experience to master level for savory pastry and personal chefs, as well as culinary educators and culinary administrators. You do not have to climb the ladder for each certification, but can test at the level that you qualify for. How do you know which level you qualify for? If you go to the next slide, you can see that we look at your work experience and your education. Your work experience must be current within the last 10 years and ranges from no experience for the certified fundamentals cook to five years as chef in charge of food production for the certified executive chef. A candidate can take a variety of paths to meet the education requirement for each level, from earning your degree or completing an apprenticeship program to a combination of a high school diploma and documented approved continuing education hours. All levels require verification of 30 hours in nutrition, supervision, and food safety and sanitation. Here's the good news. If you have your CDM or CFPP, you meet these requirements and do not need to provide any additional documentation. For the more advanced levels, such as the CEC, you will need to show 30 hours in cost control management and beverage management. Next slide, please. Once you have identified and been pre-approved for a certification level, the next step is to pass a written and practical exam. The written exams are administered through PSI. All exams are 100 questions, but vary in allotted time and minimum score to pass, depending on the certification level. Detailed information is in each handbook, including the content outline and reference books. We also offer a practice exam through our online learning center. The practical exam is taken at an approved site with testing dates and locations available on our website. If there isn't one in your area, you can reach out to the national office and we will work with our approved site administrators to get a testing scheduled for you. During the practical, your skills will be evaluated by three approved chefs looking at four domains, safety and sanitation, organization, craftsmanship, and finished product skills. A total average score of 75% or better is considered passing. Again, the requirements for each level are different with details in the handbook. Since the focus of the webinar is on the CEC, let's take a closer, closer look at those requirements. Brad, if you could go back a slide, please. Perfect, nope, four, yep, there, perfect. Nope, back one, <laughs> perfect, thank you. For the education, for the CEC, you can have either 250 continuing education hours or a high school diploma or GED plus 150 continuing education hours, or you can have an associate's degree or higher in culinary arts, or you can have completed an ACFEF apprenticeship program. You will also need to show that within your education, you completed the 30 hours each in safety and sanitation, nutrition, supervisory management, cost control, and beverage management. For the work experience, you must have a minimum of five years as a chef de cuisine, executive chef, executive sous chef, pastry chef, or chef in charge of food production in a food service operation, supervising at least five full-time people in the preparation and production of food. Next slide. For the written exam, you will have 90 minutes to complete 100 multiple choice questions covering advanced cooking, safety and sanitation, baking and pastry, nutrition, finance and operations management, and team management and leadership. You will need to earn 72% on this exam to pass. Next. 
For the practical exam, you will have three hours plus a 15 minute serving window to prepare a three course menu, four portions each, using the market basket ingredients listed in the handbook. The three courses will include a fish course presented as an appetizer portion, a salad course tossed with extra dressing served on the side, and a main course with two or more accompanying vegetables and starch. You will need to demonstrate four classical vegetable cuts, four different cooking methods, an emulsified vinaigrette made by hand, and two different sauces using different methods. The host site will provide a basic set of pots, pans, and hand tools, but you will need to bring all the ingredients to the exam. I find it best to talk the to the administrator prior to the exam to make sure that you have all the necessary items to be successful. At the end of the exam, you will receive a verbal explanation of your performance, as well as a passing sheet if you were successful. Next. I know that was a lot of information, but we're here to help you through the process. The handbook is a great resource, and I would highly recommend reaching out to your local ACF chapter to connect with a mentor. While ACF membership is not required to earn and maintain your certification, it offers benefits to help you through the process, such as mentoring and price discounts. We also <clears throat> have a concierge program if you have a group interested in becoming certified, which provides you with a dedicated account representative and pricing discounts, not only on certification, but other ACF offerings as well. When you're ready to start the journey, give us a call or send us an email. I'm excited to start seeing more dual credential chefs out there. If you have any questions, please ask them using the Q&A function and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Brad, back to you. Thank you, Michelle. Now that we have a better understanding of the CDM, CFPP credential and CEC certification, we are going to speak with two chefs who are credentialed or certified through both ANFP and ACF. Chef Leah Schuler is the owner of Schuler Consulting, where she consults on menu and diet planning on corporate and individual levels, as well as culinary instruction. Chef Leah joins us from Atlanta, Georgia. Chef David Voles is the food service director at Holly Hill Mental Health Services. Chef David joins us from Sanford, North Carolina. Let's start with Chef Leah. Please share a little bit about yourself and how your food service career has taken shape. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my culinary journey actually began as a young adult. I was having health issues and I found out it was due to my diet. I didn't know anything about nutrition and I certainly didn't know how to cook. So I began to research to find the food groups that I needed to heal. And then I started studying recipes and techniques in order to prepare that food. And not only did I enjoy it, I found that I was really good at it. So I eventually took that passion for mind and body wellness and started my own catering company where healthy food was the focus. I then eventually went to culinary school to refine my skill set, and that's where I met ACF chef instructors that encouraged me towards certification. After graduation, I sought out ACF certification and found my niche as a personal certified executive chef due to the fact that I came from the catering world. I was still seeking more knowledge and more growth in nutrition. So a few years later, I became a certified dietary manager. And because of that dual certification, I've been able to find employment in corporate dining, schools and healthcare. And dual certification has really set me apart from the crowd in competitive marketplaces because I can affect positive change, not only on the culinary side, but also the clinical. So this brings me full circle today, uh, joining you from Atlanta, Georgia, and participating in this webinar about dual certification. Thank you, Chef Leah. Chef David, can you share your food service journey that has led you to where you are today? I think you're on mute, Chef David. Funny thing about that technology. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my story, not quite as sexy as, as Chef Schuler's. Uh, I started working in restaurants when I was 16 because I wanted money to take girls on dates. Uh, and so uh, just really worked my way in restaurants and 
found uh, I had uh, an aptitude for that and, and worked on my way uh, all the way up to being a part owner of my own restaurant. And um, when we uh, finished with that venture, I decided I should go to culinary school and did that. And then uh, started a little bit more on, on the fine dining side with some uh, business clubs, hotels, and country clubs. And uh, country clubs is really where I started my certification journey and, and started that with the certified executive chef. Um, after uh, quite a few years in country clubs, uh, it was uh, apparent to me that I needed to find a little bit better work-life balance, uh, family life, and being on a line at 1030 at night calling tickets are not exactly uh, conducive. And so uh, I uh, did some, some networking and talked with some chefs who had made uh, some transitions into uh, senior dining and uh, some healthcare positions. And uh, the more I looked into that, the more it seemed very apparent uh, that a CDM CFPP certification would start to open a lot of those doors. And uh, so that's what I did. I, I pursued that certification, uh, earned that uh, on the back of my, my certified executive chef certification, um, became the uh, director of culinary at a uh, uh, high end uh, senior living facility. We did uh, independent and assisted living there. And uh, about two years ago, um, made another move uh, to my current position as food service director uh, at Holly Hill Hospital here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, where I oversee uh, three campus kitchens and uh, three crews of cooks uh, here. And so uh, definitely uh, feel that all of my, my certification um, uh, interest and pursuit has, has definitely gotten me to where I am today. Thank you, Chef David. We are now going to transition to the Q&A portion of this webinar. Uh, as mentioned at the start, if you have any questions uh, for the two chefs or for Catherine or Michelle, please put them in the Q&A feature and we'll be sure to get to them. Uh, I'm going to start with a few questions we have for the chefs. Uh, and I'll start with Chef David. Uh, you went over this a little bit, but what do you find most rewarding about working in healthcare? Um, the, the most rewarding thing I found was in my initial uh, move to uh, healthcare in the senior uh, living experience was the relationships that you're able to make. Um, you were, I was able to do some of that in, in the uh, country club umbrella because you, you see people more often, but in senior living, of course, people are there all the time. And so you get to make those great relationships. You get to know uh, about them personally. You get to know uh, what they want, how they want it cooked, uh, what their preferences are here and there. And um, the same thing to an extent with a hospital uh, that you have a brief amount of time to get to make those connections. Um, but, but for me, it's the relationships that you get to make. Chef Leah, uh, what skills are most important for you in running your own business and how has being a part of both ACF and ANFP helped you with that? Well, fortunately, I'm naturally focused, organized and driven, which is a big help, but certification certainly gave me more confidence as well as a marketable skill set and credibility in both industries. And it's enabled me to build a strong network of contacts to grow my career and my business. And a lot of them are also my biggest supporters. And so that's helpful. Each of you have invested in your career by being credentialed or certified through multiple organizations. What advice do you have for those individuals who are kind of struggling to take that first step uh, investing in their future. I'll, I'll start with you, Chef Leah, but any advice for those who are kind of on the fence about taking that step and, and what can help them? I would say join your local ACF or ANFP organizations and attend the meetings and just talk to people and get their experiences about the certification process and just ask questions. And um, there, I think you'll find many people want to mentor you and want to help you uh, through the process and, uh, you know, grow their local organization as well as national. Chef David, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I was, I was kind of pushed in my, 
my certification as a first step and and I'm looking back I'm very glad that I had a general manager that was that was uh, super pushy about that and and pushed me uh, just to get started um, I think the 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 unknown is the biggest uh, trepidation at that point is you know you don't really know a hundred thing all the things to expect and what exa how exactly everything is supposed to go but once you sort of take that leap uh, you find that you know with the if with the proper experience and, and training that you should have at that point in, in your career, uh, that is not, not as hard as what, what you think it is. And, and for me, uh, especially it, it's nice to have uh, those markers, uh, so that I'm, I'm known for what I know and what I can do. So there's an outside, uh, mark on, on my abilities. Thanks. And another question for chef David, is uh, in, in the healthcare field, we're seeing a lot of administrators and people running the facilities are looking for um, not only the CDM CFPPs that have uh, the expertise on management and nutrition and sanitation and food safety, but they, they are also uh, in demand are those individuals who not only have that, but a culinary background as well. Why do you think that it's become um, such a want for those individuals to also have a culinary background? I think just in the day and time we're living in, uh, people's knowledge and experience with food is is much more elevated than it was in the past. And so it's, uh, you know, where, you know, even as, as recently as five or six years ago, it may not have been in, in most people's wheelhouse to know what a gyro is. And, and now that's sort of a commonplace thing. And so if you were to, to menu that, even as a patient menu, uh, it's not something that's uh, unrecognizable to a lot of people. And so it certainly helps to have that culinary background to have uh, a knowledge of, of different cuisines and different uh, different food types that you can uh, serve to uh, not just uh, in your in your cafeteria for uh, retail, but also to your patients who are coming uh, from a broader mix of of cultures and, and diversity. All right, looks like we may have lost Brad. Michelle, I'm gonna ask you to hop on here. All right. So let's see if we have some more questions. Um, all right, I do see one that I can actually answer. So um, after attaining the CEC certification, are there annual fees and CEUs that are required to maintain, maintain that certification? Um, and the answer is yes. So, well, yes and no. So you do um, need to maintain continuing education hours. So your CEC certification is required to renewal every five years and you need to maintain 80 CEHs within those um, five years, including eight hour refreshers in nutrition and safety and sanitation. Um, there's no annual fees, but we do have a renewal fee um, that would be, would be due at that five year um, mark. So I don't know. If Brad is back on. Brad, it's Matt, the producer. Looks like we lost you there real quick. If you need to share your screen again, go for it. And we will get, uh, get you back in the conversation. Brad, not sure if you are there. You might be frozen. You are not there. That's OK. All right, looks like it's still up to you, Michelle. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, all right, so a lot of the questions that it looks like, okay, what is the fee structure to obtaining certification? Um, a lot of that depends for, for, um, for the ACF certification on the level that you're going for. Um, so the best option is probably to check our website. Um, or to give the office a call. Um, a lot of these questions are very specific. Um, and with ACF certifications, each situation is very unique. Um, so again, the best, the best thing is to, to call the office. And I, I believe ANFP probably feels the same way, but I'll let um, Catherine answer that piece. 
I'm sorry, can, what was the question? Can you what is that? the fee structure? Oh, sure. Um, we have uh, ANFP member and, and then non-member certification fees. So uh, for individuals that join ANFP, their um, annual certification fee is $58 a year. Um, and that has to be paid annually, uh, but membership isn't required. Um, for so for somebody that chooses not to be an ANFP member, the certification fee is one hundred eighty dollars a year, um, which is more than it would be if they were uh, an ANFP member. Awesome, and I do see some questions in the chat popping up. Um, one is for Leah. Um, how do you get the word out about your business? Uh, again, it's the networking through both, both organizations, going to conferences, uh, meeting people. Um, I even started putting out ideas for demonstrations so that I would have a forum for promoting my business. Um, I started a website, but it's really just networking, 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 and uh, not being afraid to put your skill set out there and to believe in yourself. Great, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, one question that came in is, can you use CDM courses as part of the ACF certification? And yes, you can. Um, so any courses that you take for your CDM, you can apply those towards um, CEHs for your ACF certifications. If we have any other questions. All right, we do have a question. Um, do you do any of the CEUs for ANFP intersect with the CEC requirements? Um, so Catherine, I'm gonna ask you to elaborate on the CEU requirements for the ANFP for the CDM, and then I can answer. Okay, um, so uh, the the requirements for continuing education to maintain the credential are 45 hours, we call them CEs, continuing ed units, um, in a three-year period. And of those 45 hours, five, um, nine must pertain to sanitation and safety and one must pertain to professional ethics. Um, so the, uh, the remaining hours can be um, uh, up to the individual's choice as long as they um, fit in the scope of practice of food service management and, and um, clinical nutrition and leadership skills. Uh, so you can address how that would fit in. Yeah, with and, and that falls in line with, with everything that we require for our continuing education hours. Um, I would think. Also, it's anything related to food service, health, ethics, supervision. Um, we also have a leadership requirement um, in there as well for community service or being on an advisory board, um, you know, just, just to help with the outreach to the community in that aspect, so. Jeff Falls, I have a question coming in for you. Um, working full-time as a CDM, CFPP in an acute care setting, how long would it reasonably take to attain an ACF certification? Uh, good. So I would plan on it taking maybe a year and a half to two years, just not knowing exactly your specific background and knowledge and, and what uh, education that you have. Um, again, we have the, the written test that you need to take. We always suggest that you take the written test first um, because the moratorium on that is uh, two years. Uh, and within those two years, then you would take your practical. Uh, if you do your practical first uh, for CEC, you have one year to complete your, your written. And so we all know that life happens and things go horribly sideways from time to time. So we wanna set ourselves up for success. Um, but I would think reasonably within a year and a half, you should be able to accomplish that to study up and, and get current uh, for things for your practical exam. I'm sorry, for your written exam. Uh, ACF has a great practice test uh, that you can purchase at the Knowledge Center to uh, get yourself um, ready for that. And then um, start to develop your menu and work on your CEC prep 
uh, finding a mentor, having somebody to watch you practice and go through those uh, steps, and then ultimately um, doing your practical exam at a, at a test site. Great. Um, I see there's a lot of interest um, for kind of the requirements to become, you know, if you are a CDM, what do I need to do to become um, a CEC, I'm going to recommend the next step truly is um, giving the ACF office a call. Um, we can look at your education and see which level you best qualify for and then walk you through those steps. Um, so I know at the end in the next few days you'll be receiving um, an email and we'll include this um, presentation in that webinar as well as links um, to both the ANFP and this um, ACF certification pages. Um, and it looks like Brad is trying to pop back in. Um, so I'll give him an opportunity to kind of take over. Um, Sorry about that. That's okay. We've been, we've been running through some of the questions that are in the chat um, and in the Q&A. So I don't know if you had any more um, that you received beforehand that you wanted to ask the chefs. Uh, I did not. Okay, so um, do we want to pass it over um, to Jackie? Sure. Or do you have any ending, ending slides? Yeah, sure. Let me share my screen. doesn't look like it's going to let me share the screen, but um, thank you very much for being a part of this today. As we wrap up, I did want to go over a quick little recap. If you are looking to take the next step in your career, uh, adding the CEC certification or the CDM CFPP credential to your resume may be a great way to strengthen your skill set and position you for success in the food service industry. To contact ANFP to learn more about the CDM CFPP credential, please contact info at cbdmonline.org or visit www.cbdmonline.org for more information. To contact ACF to learn more about the CEC certification, please contact certify at acfchefs.net or visit www.acfchefs.org slash certify. Thank you very much to Chef Leah and Chef David for sharing their stories and their expertise with us today. Thank you to Catherine Church and Michelle Whitfield for helping us gain a better understanding of the CDM CFPP credential and the CEC certification. And thank you to you all for taking some time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Uh, please keep an eye out for a post webinar email that will, pro that will provide more information on today's session, including the slides. And I will now pass this on over to Jackie. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Brad. Thank you to ANFP as well. Thank you to our panelists. And on behalf of the American Culinary Federation, thank you all for joining us today. We certainly hope that you're all thinking about your next steps towards your dual certifications. And we also want to invite you to our next ACF Chefs webinar, which is free and open to all who wish to attend. On June 28th, we'll be featuring Chef Bill Twaller, certified executive chef, sharing a demonstration on modern barbecue techniques. So thank you again and have a great day.